ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ricky King Russell and Miss Tony Lynn Washington. Something called Stand By Me for this song. When the night has come and the land is dark. I won't cry 
No, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stand by me If the skies that we look upon Should crumble and fall Or the mountain should tumble to the sea Welcome to a very special edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. Thanks for tuning in today. Now, as you can see, I have two individuals to my right who do not need an introduction. Each of them has appeared on my show. One who has been on here twice in the last couple of months, and like a bad penny, she keeps coming back. Oh. And to my far right, I have a gentleman who was on my show almost nine years ago to the day. There are some very special things we want to talk about, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the queen of the Boston blues, rhythm and soul, Miss Tony Lynn Washington, and the king, Mr. Ricky King Russell. Good morning. Hello. Thanks for coming on, boys and girls. All right. I Thank tell you. you. Thank you for having here. us. Miss Tony, you've been like a staple here, you know. This is like the third time you've been on in probably four months. Well, the last time you were on, we were Mr. Jimmy Capone. Yeah. And uh, Ricky, nine years, man. Nine years, bro. But and time but goes by quickly. Yeah, but we haven't we haven't changed a bit, right? Never, I don't think we've aged a day. Never. You know, oh, bring up bit. that old tape. We're gonna look great. Sure. We're and, gonna uh, that today. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be great to start off the show with uh, a little praise to our queen here because it has been recently announced that Miss Tony Lynn Washington has been elected into the New England Music Hall of Fame. <laughs> and also, you are up for nomination for the Boston Music Awards for Best Female Vocalist. Congratulations, Miss Tony. Well, thank you. How did it feel when you I, got the word? Oh, I've got to get used to it. Yeah? Because sometimes I feel like I maybe don't deserve it. Well, 
<laughs> you, you need to, you know, put that humble pie away. You deserve every bit of it. Well, it's got me busy, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Because probably not, nobody, I don't think anybody heard about her before this nomination, right, no, Ricky? Did no, you know never. anything about her? I could tell you that I go back, uh, we were both came from a band, a fairly popular band, back in the day called Boston Baked Blues. I was a founding member of Boston Baked yes. Blues. I was going to ask yeah. you that. Yep, with Vinnie Serino and the gang. And, uh, you know, as, as it is in the music business, things come and, you know, one door opens, the next door closes. And yeah. then uh, Tony Lynn and Bruce Spears came into that band after and, uh, you know, helped bring it even more forward. But that was my full personal introduction to the Now, the what year was that? How long ago was oh, that? Oh, God, that was in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> early, early. Late eighties, mm -hmm. early nineties. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you got that, you got that call, or you got that email, however you were notified. What was that first blush? What was that first feeling when they said, "Hey, you're like, going to be in the New England Music Hall of Fame," and "Hey, you're going to be nominated for female vocalist for the Boston Music Association Awards"? I was, I was blown away. I just couldn't believe it, and I kept it just kept going over and over in my mind. Is it really true? Is 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 this a Fake or what, you know? Yeah, no yeah. fake. I'll tell you <laughs> and the best thing. I found thing. out it was real. To me, the best thing about the two things is that the uh, New England Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. that's not a voting thing. You don't get to vote on that. That's, right. You just go in because that's where you belong. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. And was, and uh, the other thing will be vote for, and I'm sure this. shout out to uh, Chris Anino, Chris Anino and, uh, and Miss Steele, who were the ones who were associated with that. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. they're friends of mine. And uh, mm. I haven't talked to Chris in a while, but uh, I, I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. Now, let, let, let's just dig in just a little bit. You've been on the show three times, and I've known you very well for more than 10 years. Where does that, where does that you know, humbleness come from and that, that little bit of I don't deserve it or, you know, oh, you know, where does that come from? Is there a reason for that? Because there is no doubt in anyone's mind that you are the queen and you are great. Well, so what is I'm that grateful. little synapse in your brain that says, that I'm, makes you feel that you're not? I'm very grateful whoever gave me that title. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, you know, grateful. Mm -hmm. But I just don't uh, see myself, you know, what is, what, what's the word, tooting my own horn? Oh, and right, you don't see yourself that way necessarily. <laughs> and you can blow it and a little the, bit, the, you know, yeah. you don't have to blow it, but you can toot it a little I, bit. I want, to, I want to please, I'm a pleaser. Yeah, you are. And I, even if it's around four or five people in the audience, I'm still going to put on a show. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to give, give my best, give my all. Mm -hmm. It's my passion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is where I belong. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel super, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm good. I'm I'm okay in my skin. Good, good. Yes. Well, first of all, I think Ricky, that you and I can probably attest to the fact that there probably has not been a show that she's done where there were four or five people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there, there are some. There are some things in life that are guaranteed. I don't think yeah. so. Exactly. <laughs> now, Ricky, you know, you are Ricky King Russell. Mm -hmm. Where did the King come from? Well, uh, back, in, uh, back in the day, again, um, the late, great Steve Morse, rest in peace, Steve. He just passed away recently. Yeah, rise in power. Any, at any rate, uh, Steve wrote a piece for the Boston Globe that named me uh, Kingpin of the Boston Blues. So uh, it was a pretty easy step to remove the pin and, mm -hmm. and just stick with the king because, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the guitar player, blues guitar player, Pecker, we have a duke. Yep. And we have an earl. We do. And we, now we got a king. And we have the king. <laughs> we got a king now. Now, do you feel like you're uh, wearing the crown? Um, every chance I get to please the audience, every chance I get a chance to go out and perform and play mm -hmm. blues for mm -hmm. the audience, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm wearing a crown because, well, the blues is my, it, the blues is my girlfriend, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I love my girlfriend. Does Yvonne know, I mean? know about that? Yeah, she does. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> and, and I love uh, just to say I, I love the blues. Uh, I want to see the blues grow and prosper. And Tony's a huge part of that. And uh, it's no fooling. You know, you know what I mean. I really, I, I really sort of go at it like that. So if it, it if it puts me in a, a, a I'm not going to say a leadership, but a, but position to influence people to mm -hmm. the goodness of blues mm -hmm. and, and the positiveness and the greatness of our. Mm -hmm. 
Native American music. It comes he, from here, nowhere else, kids. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else. So well, let's let's roll back the clock a little bit. You talk about you know uh, the, the the Boston Big <coughs> Blues and uh, you know a lot of good friend Vinnie Serino and you know other people have come and gone to that band. Let's go back a little further and talk about you know how you really get into it. You know when when did you get that bug Me? when you said yeah when you said you know what. I want to be a blues player, and well, you know what was that? Do you have that seminal moment where it came up where you said, "This is what I want to be"? Yeah, it was pretty early on too. Go for it. Okay, so uh, I'm a child of the '50s, and I, I won't be too long, I promise. I was <laughs> a child of the '50s. I'm the youngest child in my family. I had older siblings, and somehow her uh, her boyfriend, the guy that turned out to be my brother-in-law, got to hear Jimmy Reed and John Lee Hooker and Ray Charles late at night. Mm -hmm. due to a phenomena in radio called skip uh back on am radio in the days if your local frequency ran from sun up to sundown yep. and they shut the transmitter off that frequency was available so if it was close to one of the bigger radio stations in the day the signal would bounce off the ionosphere thus lead mm -hmm. the skip and you would pick it up mm -hmm. and you could hear hoss allen or somebody down in uh in nashville mm -hmm. playing um, you know, blues. Now, where was this? Where were you raised? I was, I, well, at that time, I was living in Millis, Massachusetts. So you're a Massachusetts guy yeah, all I, the way I, through. So I was born in 52, so yeah, all I'm going to say okay. like 57 stuff, and Jimmy Reed came out. Yeah. So he ventured out and found the records and brought them home, and you know, now my siblings are all hanging out in the living room with the record player and dancing to Jimmy Reed and, 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 and Hooker and my sister and my brother-in-law to be went off to the Newport Jazz Festival and saw Ray Charles and brought back the what I say Ray Charles album uh, seminal you know Ray Charles yeah. record you know everybody knows what yeah. I say yes yeah. so I got exposed to this pretty early and you know something kids I knew kind of right then and there mm -hmm. you know I didn't know how to play I didn't know nothing about it but I knew what it was and it was moving and it made people happy when did you start playing guitar and, started, and why did you choose I, guitar versus uh, well, other instruments okay so you can go back to the Beatles. So if I, if I was born in 52, so 62, kid, 64, yeah. I'm, a, I'm 10, 11, 12 years old. The Beatles are out. So first I started as Ringo with a <laughs> overturned laundry basket and a couple of my mother's knitting needles to play the drums. <laughs> right. Okay. And then because I was the big guy, they gave me the bass because the bass player always gets the bigger instrument okay. because, to hide behind because he's big. Right? Okay. You don't put the big guy up front. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, <laughs> Uh, and I had a little band with my cousins, and my cousin Richard did the best John Lennon you ever really? saw. Oh, yeah. He had it down cold. You know what I mean? And we'd put little shows on. We crowded to a doorway, and when the family was all together and captive audience, we'd put on our little Beatles show. And cool. Stuff. So it started then, and I take it, you know, started taking guitar lessons from the local Italian guy at the uh, boys' club for a dime. A dime a shot, you know what oh, I mean? Really? Yeah. Right. So you're in the teens now. You're what, 14, 15, yeah, you know, give so, or take, right around and there? You know, I'll, I'll tell you another thing. I won't go on too long. Go for it. We have no time limit here. Sucking up the air here. But, you know, uh, so I was I was into, you know, bl black music, African-American music. You sure. know, pretty early on, I, I heard the difference, right? So the Beatles came on, and they sounded kind of thin compared to Gary and the U.S. Bonds or, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Marvin James Gay Brown and, and all those guys. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. My, my brother-in-law went away to, uh, to Georgia for the, uh, um, in, in the Army National Guard and came back with Live at the Apollo, which was a best, mind Best blowing. live album I, I have. I play that to death. Mind-blowingly good record. So, so when you hear the Beatles, they sound a little... <laughs> took a while to get used to it. Took a minute. Now, Live at the Apollo, was it the black cover album or the blue one? No, I had... I had so there the were two had, of them. I had, I had, the, the, we had I the, the black one. one. The, the artwork yeah. one that looked like that's that. an unbelievable album. That's a good one to cut your teeth on. So when you started off, you know, you, did you form a band, and when did you start, you know, be, be progressing well, and okay, going so up the ladder? Right around, right around there. Right, you know, Dad brought home a, 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 an acoustic guitar he bought from a guy somewhere, and uh, you know that was my beginning. So at first I took two strings off it and turned it into a bass because I figured I was going to keep playing, trying to play bass. But then I figured out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be a guitar player, and mm -hmm. then, you know, the Doors came along, and the Jimi Hendrix experience came along, all those right. know, late, late 60s things that Tony knows a lot about, I bet. You probably heard guys playing that all over the place yeah. when you But those aren't right. blues, though. I mean, no, they were well, like the Hendrix classic rock. They, the Hendrix could play some blues, but, uh, you know, where did, where did you hang your hat and say, you know what, I want to be a blues guitarist, I want to be a well, blues okay, singer? So I, I, I sort of went into it 
uh, I sort of went into it backwards. The advent of the Jeff, first Jeff Beck group, Led Zeppelin, uh, Hendrix. Okay, so you look at the records, and if they played a cover, like Hendrix covered Killing Floor by Howl mm -hmm. Wolf. So you go back and you find the guy. You know what I mean? You do the, right. the backwards but, detective right. work, and you find out who Freddie King is, and you find out who Muddy Waters is, and you find out who yep. Howl Wolf is. Yep. You know what I mean? Just by going backwards. Mm -hmm. Cool. And it was, they weren't too far. It, it wasn't like there were so many generations away mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When did you start playing in clubs? Mm, when 16, you start getting your gigs, 60. where were you playing? Any of them still around? No, you know, church coffee houses, no, none of them still around. Yeah. Uh, Revere Beach, you know, really? I mean, stuff like that. You know, a little bit of a circuit. As I got a little bit older, I went Bill out. Ashes in Revere? Mm. No, uh, the, the, uh, the Frolics, whatever used to be the play there, I used wow. to get opening gigs, you know, for there. I saw Errol Smith there for a dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Miss Tony, you know, just just flip gears over here. You know, you talked a lot about your background and, and where you came from with the USO and and all those things. You know, think of something that you haven't talked about. You know, something that you know in in your experience of, that you haven't done. Talk about some of the people whom you've played with and some of the people whom you've met along the way, rather well, than repeat a lot of history here. Well, Talk about one something. One of my new. favorite is Ruth Brown. Ruth Brown. Ruth Brown. My mother took me to this club in Boston. You know, it was a high class kind of thing. You, uh, it's called the hi hat. I remember the hi hat. I remember that. It had the big hi hat with the yeah. song, and it had the had the yeah valet parking. Had, it had the valet, I mean, it was the first people uh, used to get the, the walking. How, people how you, how dressed up and everybody be out the walking cane across the hat. Be, yeah, you know, man, you know I used to sneak into the hi hat when yeah. I was a kid. Go ahead, keep going. I used to work there as a you waitress. As a waitress. You lied about your age. I did. <laughs> I bet you did. I remember I the high hat. There were all I, those places: Slades, Adele's. She, she was Estelle. amazing. She was amazing, and I just, I love her beauty and the way she, you know, mm -hmm. and it, I just wanted to be like her. Did you meet her? I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. My mom took me there because I was on the age. I was mm -hmm. under age, right. but she took. But she took me there, and I, I met her. Do you remember and, what she may have said to you? Did you express an interest in music or anything, or did she give you any uh, any I advice? I did. Or? I did. I used to listen to her a lot on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, she was Miss Rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, teardrops she, in my eyes. Yes. yes, I liked everything that she did. Yeah. So, and I learned all of her songs just about. And uh, that's when I raise my age up to get into some clubs and to go sit in. You better be careful. I'm band. not sure if the statute of limitation has run out on that. Ah, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get up and go, you know, sit in with the bands and everything, and um, and I'd sing her song and come to find out every other girl wanted to be mm -hmm. like Ruth Brown. <laughs> Ruth Brown. Yeah. <laughs> and they like every other guitar player me. wants to be B.B. <laughs> King. You know? yeah. yeah. So and there were a few other... Uh, people that I I like but I never met them you know like Laverne Baker mm -hmm. and um, I met uh, Joe Williams sure great and, voice what uh, a voice on Mr. Williams oh my god his, his, voice. Uh, his last note on uh, every day I have the blues with Basie oh. it goes on forever yeah. <laughs> Go on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, Joe, where you get the win for that? You that's, know? One, that's one of my opening oh. tunes that yeah, I do. You, you know, and I notice every every time I see it on on YouTube, I'm doing every day I have the blues. Mm -hmm. People are gonna think that's the only song I know. I'm <laughs> doing. Yeah, you, 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 you they come to the show, they'll figure out oh, that ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, who else? You know, you so, met, you mentioned those people, and I know that you started. When did you actually start? Playing in clubs where you you know you would get up. I was and about either people would play I, I to see to you around, or they'd go to see you. I had to be maybe around eighteen years old. Uh huh. And uh, but back then the age was twenty one. Yep. Yep. So I would go downtown to Boston to this to uh, this club. It's, it's you know slips my memory right now, but this this band called. Uh, Fat Man Robinson. You ever heard of him? Yeah. Fat Man Robinson. And I'd get up and I'd sing with him and and I'd get the crowd and, you know, and everything. And I began to go to fashion shows. Was it the Sugar Shack by shows. any chance? You play the Sugar Shack? 
I've never Was played the Sugar it? Shack, okay. but I've been there. Estelle's and Slade's. We talked about es that. You Estelle's. Played those. Yeah, Slade's. Es es Estelle's was a you know of a class. Yeah, Slade's you know, was you know your blue collars and Estelle's you know you had right. to put, a, put get all get those places up. I I went to when I was you know young. Yeah, See, you're, 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 so, was, you're so you're so lucky. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and I, that, I was and, walking. I didn't and, get and, on the. I didn't have a car. Didn't have. Um, but but you're so lucky in the sense that those places were available to go see somebody like that, man. You know, oh, it's, it, it was amazing. It's hard now. Those were the days. Those were the days. But look at the and, look at the people who played down at uh, the the clubs on um, Huntington um, Boylston Street, mm -hmm. the two underground clubs yeah. there. Who who, who, didn't, the, who didn't play there? Oh. Those places, you know, everybody was there. B.B. King was there. Freddie yeah, King, Harry right? Mellon yeah, and everybody the Blue Notes. Was, they were all down there, down uh -huh. in the basement down there. Yeah, it's called uh, the Sugar Shack. No, the Sugar Shack no, was the, in an Paul's alleyway. Mall, Paul's, Paul's Mall. Paul's Mall. The, Paul's and the Mall, other place oh, next to there. it. There was another place next yeah. to it. But Sugar Shack was there. in the alleyway. The, the man owned both of them. Yeah, the Sugar Shack was the man, was, was in an alleyway. I don't remember the location. Down in downtown but off that of was Boylston. Down, it was that was down the, the Boylston alley. That was in Boylston yeah. Street, a little side street down there, way okay. down the back. Right you know? across from yeah. Ace Recording. But it moved, it moved to Mass Ace. Avenue, Mass and Columbus Avenue. Yeah. yeah. And then you have the place, speaking of Mass Avenue, you have your, your place who's still there. It's been there since uh, the Last Supper, I think. Yeah. Or right. Wally's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on Wally's. There. Wally's. Mm -hmm. Um, you did your time there. I did my time there. there. I used to um, <laughs> uh, uh, sing. There, there was a ballroom on one side, and there was a bar on the yep. other. And um, I would, you know, hang out in in the ballroom and watch the big shows that come through. Yeah, right. yeah. Duke and Dolly, oh, they wow. were dancing, you know, a couple. And I said, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be just like that. They were dressed. To the oh, night. yeah. And you get down that street, stage. man. Yep. Looking tacky, you know. Mm -hmm. you, we both know Shorte Billups, right? Mm -hmm. And and you know how Shorte dressed when oh, you yes. when you walk down what? Mass Avenue there, where Mass and you know Tremont, and then Mass and Columbus. Yes, there were a hundred Shorte Billups. Right, on exactly. that corner and down those down those clubs and everything. Exactly. That big club right that on the was corner. That was the place to be. Yeah. Where did you play in Boston, Ricky? When did you start getting into Boston well, and start breaking into okay, the scene so, down there? So, so you know, I, I I sort of I sort of bounced around a little bit. You know what I mean? Playing uh, in, in different sort of what you might term neighborhood bands. So, mm -hmm. okay, in the six, uh, in, in late start six, bragging, Ricky. Start <laughs> bragging, kid. I can see. I can see. In the late sixties, in the late sixties, start bragging, kid. In the late sixties, I lived in a con. Right, as most in a hippie. commune, yeah, as most cool. hi as most hippie types did yeah. back then, right? Mm -hmm. So we lived in Chelsea, and we had the uh, first floor and third floor of a three decker with the with the landlord in the middle. Well, yeah. you know, there was eighteen of us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There was a bunch, whole bunch of us, right? And after a while, the landlord didn't dig it, and neither did the police. So the police came to <laughs> uh, the police came one day and said, "You know something? Y'all ought to think about leaving Chelsea. <laughs> we, we heard a little too much about you." So. Uh, what we did is that we headed down to Hyannis on Cape Cod, and we found a winter rental. And uh, the winter rental happened to be this place tucked away near, uh, in the west end of Hyannis, near, near the uh, the hotel there, yeah. which comes into play here, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's see, it, it had two sets of bunk beds in every room. So there were two, four, six, eight, just about right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we took that for the winter. I think it was like 90 bucks a month. Wow. Well, you know what I mean? Back then, because it was then. off season. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we hung out there. And then I was the first one to sort of go over to the hotel, Dunphy's, Parker House, whatever it is, across from the yep. from the tent. And I got the first job as a dishwasher. Now I got <laughs> now I got it in, right? We got it in. Hey man, I'm you know, I'm eighteen years old, whatever. You know, I'm yep. <laughs> the hustle's on, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get three hots out of this somehow, you know what I mean? So uh, you know, uh now I'm getting fed twice a day because the hotel fed you when you work there, right? And I, now I got all of my roommates. Now, now we took over pretty much the kitchen of the whole place. But so I joined a band down there that eventually turned into a a road band, my first real road band called Orphan Annie. Orphan Annie. Yeah. 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 Orphan mm -hmm. Annie. It, it was a rock band, and we'd play. We played for a booking agent, right? That that that, that had a stable of rooms and, mm -hmm. and this is when you go out for a week and you stay Wednesday through Sunday mm -hmm. right and then you know you have Monday Tuesday off and then on to the next Wednesday through Sunday and mm -hmm. sometimes you you know you know they'd have a special on Wednesday I mean right. we were close to Fort Devon so the place I played on Wednesday Absolutely. night sometimes <laughs> would be a 
What yeah. t-shirt contest? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music were you playing? Rock and roll? Uh, I was playing rock music of yeah. the day. Deep, yeah. pur Deep Purple, Zeppelin, you yep. know what I mean. Yep. This stuff. Rock of the day. I, yeah. Yes, I've played Stairway to Heaven for money, for <laughs> Frankie. <I've>, uh, you know, <laughs> I know Smoke on the Water still. But even if you even if you had a chance, if you ever heard, uh, that band put out a single that uh, I was amazed to find on Discogs, the record searching place. Or from any, uh, you know, a song called Jed on one side and Every Day and Night on the other. Every Day and Night a rock ballad, Jed like ZZ Top, mm -hmm. right? But let me tell you, I was a bluesy player then because the blues was in me. Right, you right. can put all these other things around. It's like you. You can't help but sing soulful, right? It, it, it's in you. You can't right. help but sing the blues. It's you. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I sing the blues. I, I love jazz. When Nancy Wilson, when I heard Nancy Wilson, I says, I want to sing that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I sing swing stuff and... Yeah. Um, I, I'm all over the, the map yeah. as far as music is concerned. Right. You know? just, I'm very let's just do a quick refresh of where Tony Lynn came from because, you know, you stole a couple of uh, well known people's names, right? Barbara Lynn. Barbara Lynn. Um, I, she was in one of those um, Motown Correct. Uh, uh, traveling shows. Yep. And, and, and I just loved her. She played the guitar, and she, you know, sang lefty, in lefty as well, yeah. lefty guitar. And when my daughter she was born, played the wrong born, side, right? When my daughter was born, I named my daughter after her, Barbara Lynn. Nice. And um, then I like the name Lynn, so I says I'm gonna uh, uh, name myself uh, Tony Lynn because there was, you know, a girl named Vicky Sue Robinson and yeah. this person, you know. She turned yeah, the beat around, sounds, didn't she? I'm sorry. She turned the beat around. Yeah, yeah. So she's, you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Franco. Sorry, Franco. That died a miserable yeah. death. <laughs> it's not blues, Ricky. Uh, yeah. So I can I can sing in just about any category. Get a job with any any band. Good. Good for you. Yeah. Now, Ricky, uh, kind of fast forward a little bit to when you know you really became established, when you became you know Ricky Russell. Okay, and, so, you know, stat, so I did. I did let's let's just, let's just say bit. I did my time in the cover, yeah, cover, yeah. The cover rock forward. circuit. Fast forward, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, finally, I decided one night I'm just done with it. And uh, believe it or not, the band left me at the at a, um, a Wendy's at the side of the road, and I hitched back to town. It's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a it's a real you know, right <laughs> through the jungle, and I got a job. You know what I mean? And uh, did some things, and then played with another band that was sort of we had a big mattress song of the week for a month. Yeah, WBCN. Uh, yeah, big WBCN, mattress, that, right? That was called the Burn. That band and mm -hmm. uh, a song called "Let Yourself Go." It made a little noise. Went out to California, writing slight uh, something. Guys had good songs and everything, and uh, you know, we were just kind of just like what was going on. This is like sort of almost in the Van Halen esque sort of era, uh, a little later than that. And uh, of course, one of the guys bummed out artist and repertory of the of the of the uh, the label. They said goodbye, mm -hmm. and we came back <laughs> dragging our tail behind us. So. I had I had a day job that I got hurt on. I got uh, I uh, was on a ladder and got hurt, and I st I was staying home on workman's compensation, healing my knee, and I just said, it's right about this time I started going to Silas Hubbard's Sunday afternoon jam session at the mm -hmm. 1369 Club in Cambridge with my buddy Hal Petcher. Mm -hmm. So we go there, you know, and I said, man, I know how to do I can do this. So once I was healthy enough, I gathered up all my records and brought them to Stereo Jack, all my rock records. And I said, mm, that's all of it. I said, hey, I'm taking as much blues, because they had tons of blues albums, and I just loaded up, man. I just loaded up, and I went home, and I just started listening again. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know something? I can do this, because, you know, most rock bands, they want a stylized kind of singer. I was never a front man singer right. before. I right. was a blues man. I know. No, I was a background mm -hmm. singer. Right, and they, uh, most of these guys want stylists. They want Robert Plant. They want Paul Rogers. They want that high tenor rock voice. Well, mm -hmm. I'm a natural baritone. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Natural. I can push it. But so I figured out, wow, I can. Thrill is gone. Thrill is gone away. Right. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that, that works. That works. So I figured it out pretty quick, and then I started going to jams more and more, and got Boston, Boston Bake version one. Mm -hmm. Together, who was in that original band? Okay, it was uh, you, the other guy, uh, other guitar player was Hal Petcher. Yeah, uh, a, a fellow named Butch Black at the beginning that turned into uh, the late Jim Meridian uh, on bass. Uh, 
uh, Kevin Robichaud, the late Kevin Robichaud, was there, uh, replaced by the late, too many lates, uh, the late Tuffy Kimball. Tuffy, yeah. Yeah, for a while. And then uh, uh, I, we had a harp player named Chuck Morris, who was from South Carolina, so he went back home to South, South Carolina, and that's when we took Vinny in, and that's when mm. we met. <laughs> All right. With Vinny Serena, right? Right. Then we. Yeah. Just now, it. weren't you the original, one of the original founders of the Boston Blues Society? Were, yeah, were you I part was, of that? I, yes, I am. You part and of Holly that. Harris? Myself and Holly Harris and um, uh, Mark Ryder. Mark Ryder, yeah. Yep. And, um, oh, my dear, the, my, our good friend, the great publicist, Karen Leipziger. Uh, was the very first iteration. I don't think I know her. I know the no, others. No, she's uh, she lives down uh, uh, the, a great tenor sax player, Dennis Taylor, uh, excellent, uh, deceased man. Too many dead people. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, she's a publisher, a publicist in Nashville now. Yeah. You know, so uh, but she was uh, there at the beginning, and then Charlie Abel came in. I was around for that. Uh, then you I, started the, over at uh, what was the the place? Um, Charlie's Club. Uh, in Alston? Yeah. Hoppers Ferry. Hoppers Ferry, right. And I had, now, I, now it's I a had, sound check, obviously. I had, uh, I, had, uh, I had the Wednesday night there for a decade, up until the, 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 the time that the first House of Blues hired me away. Yeah. I remember walking over there. I, I lived in uh, Mission Hill, and I used to hang around uh, the places over on Beacon Street, Com Ave, and, mm -hmm. you know. Well, if you were in Mission Hill, then. you were near Ed Burke's. Ed Burke. I knew Ed well. We, that was our hangout. You know, I, I was five minute walk from where I was with Ed Burke, the late mm. grade two. The cellar of that place was always <laughs> a little scary. We were kids, but you know, Ed. You know, like I said, I think I think the microphone's off and the statute of limitations over. You know, Ed was very very friendly with uh, a lot of the high school kids, <laughs> okay. as far as you know, looking the other way. You know, and yeah. like, oh, you know, you're you're 22, aren't you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was a great place to go. Plus, you know, you went there to listen to the music. Right. You know, I mean, you know, you played. Everybody played at Ed Burke's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was I the did place too. to go. Everybody played yeah. at Ed Burke's. You know, and uh, I, I didn't. I didn't know any of you. Any of But now, back then. but now, I don't know. Can I? Can I take a left hand turn here? Go for it. Hey, where's the club to play at? You had Hoppers. You had Johnny D's. You had Burke's. Yeah. You had all, all a bunch of little other little places. Boston Baked made his bones at a little joint in Austin called yep. O'Brien's. It's still there. Yep. You know, down at the corner. Uh, you know, where are the, where's the clubs? Yeah. There's no club. There's yep. no there's no place that we can hang our hat as a blues club. You know. And they're I mean? all closing. I mean, the the ones closing, where closed, you can do that, they're uh, closing know, or know. closed. I look I look around. That's why. Well, I, there are some clubs that are, you know, thriving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the uh, Grace by Nia C is nice. C note. Yeah, and, yeah, but uh, that's that's not a the casual beehive. place. I'm talking, that's a I'm destination. Talking, yeah, in, in Boston. Yeah, you're yeah. looking uh, yeah. in town. Boston. Beehive, uh, the Beehive. You guys yeah. play there all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. I play. Yeah, I play there from time to time. But like a straight blues joint. Like right. the one at one point, the Harpers Ferry was a straight and blues. I I saw you at Harpers Ferry. And the Yard yeah. Rock too played a lot. Yeah, yeah. straight blues. Yard that's all Joe wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much anymore. No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you. You, you kind of led me into one of my questions about is um, how have you seen the evolution? You know, the evolution or the de-evolution of the blues. I mean, you know, you touched upon it with there's no place to play, but mm -hmm. you know, each of you has been in the scene, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. Start with you, Ricky. How how have you seen the evolution of the de-evolution of the blues as okay, you so have walked through it for I'll the last? I'll take the I'll take the most the mo I'll, I'll go with the most recent peak. Go for <laughs> it. This is old already, right? Go for it, Stevie. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. All right. David Bowie's Let Let's Dance album comes out. Help me, George. <laughs> Find out what year that was, will you? Uh, okay. Let's Dance comes out. Everybody hears uh, Stevie Ray doing Albert King kind of licks over Bowie's thing, right? right? Mm -hmm. So everybody immediately is turned on by that. Then, but then his record comes out. Then Robert Cray's record has come out. The fabulous Thunderbirds have been around for a while. There's a basis for this, right? So then all of a sudden, things start to happen, right? Everybody's on that. You know what I mean? How many? At one point there, how many different Stevie Ray clone bands could you see? Yeah. It's, it's right. like clone Beatle bands. It's like right. clone anything bands. You know what I mean? But but that was the rise. Right. You know, Robert Cray, and then it hung there for a while. And then inevitably, House of Blues came. That was good for us. That was good mm -hmm. for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was good for a lot of people for a while. And, and, and then they changed their thing. And then they kind of turned away from the blues. And 
things started going, and then we had to go through the horrifying pandemic. And that was pretty much the day, the day the pandemic dropped. I went from 18 dates a month, which wasn't my maximum, but like half my maximum. I mean, if I, if I could at one point, I was working 20, 22 dates a month with various things. But th that day I went from 18 to zero for four years. Right. Not a lot of things recover from that. Right. But go back a little bit. You know, you, you started off with, uh, you know, you had the King, your, your Freddie King, your Albert King, your BB Kings. You had your, you know, your John Hookers. You, yeah, well, know, John well, that's, that, that, you had that whole, you know, then you had Muddy, you know, you, you kind of walked through all yeah. of that stuff but, there. But, 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 then, okay, so you mentioned Muddy. Even Muddy had to leave the States to get famous again. Yeah. You know, he had, they had to go play in Europe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get famous again. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? What do you think of the of the new blues? You know, you get the the Joe Bonamassas, you get the, you know, pick whoever else. You know, even Go even ahead, your Mike Walsh. Miss Tony's ready for this. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> Who do you, you know? What do you what do you think of the you know the new blues over the last let's let's say ten years or so versus going back when you were cutting your teeth into the field? Well, in my opinion, there's only one kind of blues, which is the the uh, well. Lightning Hopkins, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my it doesn't come to me you right. Know, right, right away. The, tr the traditionalist. But, but as far as Joe is concerned, I, I he is a good entertainer. Okay. And um, he, you know, this day and age, you know, his, uh, uh, you know, the younger people or the middle-aged people is, is very attracted, you know, to that type of music now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's great. Would you call it La blues? I wouldn't call it blues. What would you call it? I would call blues it rock uh, you know, soul, uh, blues rock. Mm -hmm. um, there's different, you know, titles, mm -hmm. you know, that, that go there. Because what would you call it, Ricky? What would you call the new stuff? Okay, so the last wait, 10 years, so give or take. Since we're talking about Joe, right, let's talk about Joe for a minute. Go for it. Uh, it depends what Joe show you're going to go to see. There's rock Joe shows, yeah. and there are blues Joe shows. Yeah. Okay. Right? okay. So which one am I buying? There's something else that comes with Joe, other than the fact that I agree with Miss Tony uh, completely, that he's a good entertainer. Mm -hmm. That's what people paying for. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, you know, I mean, they want to be entertained. They don't want to be taught. They don't want to be, you know, oh, by the way, this is how, you know, B.B. Yeah. King did it on September 13th, 1955. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I'll give you that if you want, but with Joe, there's the gear thing, too. The gear thing. Uh -huh. right? And Joe travels with old guitars that everybody loves, and you get a chance to see Joe play an old guitar through a bunch of old amps, louder than all but Jesus, mm -hmm. and, and such like. So, so that's part of the draw, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's like going to the museum when you go to a joke show. You know what I mean? There's a lot mm -hmm. of cool stuff up there if you're into vintage guitars. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a, there's a there's a double draw right there. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And don't don't take nothing away from Joe uh, Bonamassa. He's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. Everything you see, he built. He's a marketer. Yeah. Nobody yeah. gave him nothing. Right. Yeah. He, you know, he, he he's not on no big label. Where I like he, the way he gives um, you, you know the the old. Blues different treatment. Okay. Uh, that's what I like to do. Okay. You know, yeah, take you, a song and, and you, you, you jazz make it, up your blues. Yeah, sometimes jazz it a up bit. or funk it up, it up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I think you know that's what you know that's why people enjoy you know my show. Sometimes there's a few people there, and then sometimes there's a lot, you know. But I give it my all, and I right. hire the best. Best oh, you I surround yourself with some good talent. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ricky, you know, um, and then we can move on he's to something. He's so busy. Is that, I, I can't catch up with this guy. He's, 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 he's so busy. You know? I, I brought this up before with other folks. And I'll bring it up with you, Ricky. Is uh, I think I brought it up with you and other people. Is that um, when Professor Harp, you know, was, was on the show one time, and we were talking about a similar type of thing we're talking about now, and I was asking about the old blues on the blues. He says, well, you know, in his typical Hugh Holmes, you know, mm -hmm. authoritarian voice, it was like, mm -hmm. they play too many notes. He goes, all they're concerned about is playing notes, too many notes. Yeah. <laughs> What's your take on that, Ricky? Well, being someone who 
unfortunately or fortunately, can play too many notes right. at any given time. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it like this, and I'll just give you an opinion. Hugh Go Holmes is, is a true traditionalist when it comes, he is. To, when it comes to blues. Very traditional. And, and, and I'm kind of in that, in that camp. But I guess, it, like Joe Bonamassa, though, look, Hugh wants to do it one way, and that's how he's going to do it. Right, right? Yeah. correct. And me, very... I'm willing to sort of take a look around and say, okay, so like, what's happening here, right? You play and, to the audience? Uh, like, yeah, and yeah. once again, this is about the audience. It's right. not about me. Right. When I'm home in my office playing my guitar, I play for me, you know, or the neighbors, unfortunately, they are stuck listening mm -hmm. to me anyway. Well, I'm on the other side of Weymouth. I can hear you. Yeah, okay, so there you go. But, but you know what I'm saying? So I do, when I do that, but when I'm in, the, in, a, a, sh in a playing situation with other people and, and a group of people, and you start to play one or two songs and you see things, you know what's going on, Tony. You know, things go this way or things go that way. You know, we might have to shift gears a little bit, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to get, yeah. right. to get things going in the right way, right? I, I, I like you, I'm a traditionalist mm -hmm. uh, as far as my taste. In, in the blues, mm -hmm. right? Right? Uh, you know, I love the simplicity of blues. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, in its uh, you know in its older style, there's a lot of simplicity. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. My axiom: blues is simple music played by simple people for simple people. This isn't symphony music. Mm -hmm. you know now, I mean? where, where you're only going to play the dots on the paper. Right. Now, Tony Lynn did a lot of name dropping back. Why don't you do a little bit of name dropping with some of the people whom you've met along the way and, and you know, what kind of influences they may have had on you when you meet someone famous and said, hey, Ricky, you know, whatever. You know, okay, so drop I'll, a few names and talk about right, some I'll of those drop, drop people who names. influenced you. Okay, so I was lucky enough to play, play with and for uh, John Lee Hook. Who is it? John Lee Hooker. John Lee Hooker. Okay, so I got to play for Hooker, and um, let's see. Uh, I got to play for Aretha, Aretha Franklin a little bit one night, a, a secondary pop, but still it counts, right? And, sure. Uh, um, let's see, uh, Mighty Sam McLean. Uh, I, I, I had Susan Tedeschi on my bandstand a lot when she was coming up before she was, you know, of course with Derek and before she was who she turned into, but she was there. Uh, let's see, uh, I'll, I'll tell you my biggest and most important one is Honey Boy Edwards, David wow. Honey Boy Edwards, uh, running buddy of Robert, you know, uh, Robert Johnson. Yeah, Robert Johnson, uh, his running boy. So he comes to me, I, I, I got to, uh, they brought him to the first Harry's down the Cape. They brought him there a lot mm -hmm. when it was a little shack out back and then it, it, even in the second one. So one night I walked him out to the car, went, helped him out with his stuff and he comes to me, take my hand please. And he goes, all right now, God's on me. All right now, you're not gonna quit on me, are you? you you're gonna keep this going. All right. Right? You're gonna keep it. So it was the handoff, man. Yeah. It was the handoff. Honey boy, older man in his 90s, right? He anointed you. He anointed you. He knew me and he knew I was sincere okay. and that my heart was in it. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure that I knew that he knew yeah. that I was you know, serious and he wanted me to keep the tradition going. So. Yeah. That's what I'm doing my best for because Honey well, Boy you, told me. <laughs> you, you, you do pretty good. Yeah. Now, we're all, we're not kids anymore, all of us, you know, we're not kids anymore. And you had referred earlier to some of your old music that you've looked at. And there are tons of videos and tons of things out there. What do you think and how do you feel if you were looking on YouTube and you saw Tony Lynn Washington 30 years ago? When you're watching that, what goes through your mind? Well, I... Like, like I have a CD, I've got to make a copy for you from 1997. I what was on goes the road through your mind lot. when you look back in time, you know, where you are now and where you were? What kind of yeah. thoughts and feelings go through your head when you look back and see yourself? Well, I, I, I've done a lot of traveling mm -hmm. all over the world. I've spent more time touring than I have you know, in, in, being local. Mm -hmm. uh, when I moved to California, I joined the um, Sound 70 uh, club and we we toured, you know, with Bob Hope's the USO, USO right? shows yep. and we did, you know, the Vietnam and then we did stateside. We did a lot of military gigs. Yep. and So I have been on the go most of my singing career, mm -hmm. most of my singing career. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
uh, we've come through different eras of the music, like soul mm -hmm. and um, swing, Some you know, jazz, rock right? and, and blues. Right now, I'm more involved with the blues because I know a lot of blues musicians. Right. And and uh, but I still take take it and put my treatment to it, you right. know, and I give them the directions. Right. But when you, you see know, yourself, you know, so when, when you see, for me. yeah, you know, everybody knows how old you are. But let's say you look back and you see the, you know, the fifty-year-old Miss Tony or the sixty-year-old Miss Tony. What do you see when you look at that? Yeah. Think on I that. On I'll ask you, years, Ricky. So you don't have I an don't answer know. right away. Think on that, Ricky. What do you see when you look back on some of your old videos and you hear your old music and, you know, where you are now and what kind of emotion or feeling do you have when you say, "Wow, this I'll, is me I'll, in, I'll, I'll in 1980." Here. Um, okay. Other than the, other than the obvious physical changes. Yeah. In, in myself, but I don't mm. necessarily need to go there. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to the. I'll speak to the. I, I see the growth I've had between then and now mm -hmm. because I've certainly grown, you mm -hmm. know, between it for 30 years and now, 20 years and now, you know what I mean? I've taken on more things and different things. A lot of my playing experiences these days are with groups that are, are not really uh, are groups all the time. So it's like when you're walking into something and you have to adapt in situations. So I've become more adaptable because of those situations. I'm not mm -hmm. quite as rigid as I might have been at one point, you know. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. When I was when I was working hard trying to make a name for myself, it was so on all the time and you're pushing hard mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. that you might not s stop and smell the flowers in a couple of places where maybe right. you should have. You know what I mean? That's where and, I was kind of going. And, you know, that's and, how and I was stuff like that. that. But, but now I look back with a sense sense of accomplishment. I really have nothing to prove to my, certainly to myself as far as longevity goes. You right. know what I mean? Right. There's two generations that don't know who I am. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, but but uh, by and large, you that, know what I mean? That, that, that's a great answer. What about you? I'll just touch on that a little bit more. Well, any sentimentality? Any any you know? You mean comparing? When no, I was just in general. Or? Just in general, you in know, general? like you know, I like you know, if I'm going back and I look at myself, I go back and look at some of my shows from 10, 12 years ago, and it's like, wow, you know, like kind of what you said, you know, I see the evolution, I, don't see I see too the many difference, I see the, you know, no, I see the changes. I don't. No, you don't, no. you don't do much. No, no, I, I don't see too many, of my, too many of my shows. Well, you Ricky's should go watch a couple. <laughs> really good. You, you so? I, well, Ricky's uh, picking up that guitar. So, so yeah. folks at home, maybe instead of uh, talk about our music and talking about the music, I think it might be time to hear a little bit more of it. So, sit back and relax. Listen to these two folks, and we'll be back in a minute. Every day I have the blues. So one, two, I think I'm out. Every day I have the 
blues oh. Every day Every day I have the blues When you see me worrying, baby It's you I hate to lose me nobody seems to care sometimes I believe nobody seems to care bad luck and trouble don't you know I've had my share not every day every day every day I have the blues every day, every day I have the blues. When you see me worrying, baby, it's you I hate to lose. Wow, guys, that was pretty awesome, pretty awesome. I told you that you were going to enjoy that. But um, we've been talking for, for quite a while. Um, Ricky, why don't you rattle off some of the places where people can see you and where people can find you and listen to see, your you music? Can and you can see me whenever they run it on Snack TV. The calendar. <laughs> <laughs> the calendar's not too full right now, man. Uh, I'm, I'm going through another bout of uh, uh, treatment and uh, so 
taking a little time off. little hiatus? Getting myself together and getting my, my new release together. And the holidays are coming, and I don't want to be running around too right. far. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Well, but, you can find them on Facebook. Go and look them up on Facebook. And you've got some videos I'll be, I'll out there on YouTube and out up. there. So go out Frank, and look for Frank. them. Among the, uh, the admissions to Halls of Fames and nominations uh, for Miss Tony. For the Blues Entertainer of the Year. That's right. I may have misspoken earlier. But let's not forget a new wrinkle to the Tony Lynn Washington oh, saga. Oh, I was going to get to that, but why don't you take okay, a well, seat and lead off uh, on it. Go for it. Could Go you for talk it. a minute about your new release coming out? A new out? CD. Produced by Brian Templeton. Oh, the, the, uh, the spiritual CD. The spiritual CD. Yeah, I was listening to it oh, you know, on my way over here. You were, yeah. I've yeah. heard some of it. You sound yeah. pretty good for... Uh, <laughs> well, I think know, the tracks are great. <laughs> for, you know, you sound pretty good for a sinner. <laughs> hey, hey. T t tell us about it. That, that, that this new release is stacked with some of the best from around here, singing and playing. With You've you, right? got some great oh, names on there. Really, I uh, I don't even know who's on there. Well, I bet you Ed Shear's <laughs> on there. Ed, yeah, Ed Ed Shear. We and got Brian. the horn section, and um, Brian, you know Templeton. He is the uh, producer. The producer. Diane Blue and Kit uh, Holiday. Kit Holiday yeah, is in the background. Some background. And. Um, Dave uh, Lamina uh -huh, on keys, and we got Bruce Spears on keys. Mm -hmm. um, we got Steve Monahan on bass. bass. There's there's you got Mike a Williams lot playing with you. That yeah, Mike on there too. Mike who? Williams. Mike Williams. Yeah, uh, I thought so. There was there's a ton of uh, musicians. Really and that really play. and really good ones. <laughs> oh my God, they are awesome! I was blown except away. I wasn't even listening to the boys. Except y'all missing one. I was listening to the tracks. Except y'all missing one. You know that. And, and, and who, who were you in there too? No, no. Oh, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say you couldn't get any good guys. You know. <laughs> no, and who, I, who I, no man. Because she, no I wasn't. Man, I wasn't in charge. I wasn't that, at the. Uh, uh, you know, I wasn't at the recording when they was, um, you know, doing the tracks. No, they, and and no. who ma who made you look nice and pretty on the cover? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, the, uh, you know, the she, photo it, that was taken, yeah. um, I wasn't happy with it, but I didn't want to express that we, because we I just touched it up a little get, bit it's a know, great photo nothing wrong with a little touch up and that's so, a little touch yeah. up we, we you and I, beautiful I called my it. buddy here and I says is there anything you can do with this picture <laughs> <laughs> so let, me, let me ask you this the, so, the songs the songs that you picked they have special meaning to you do they, do they, do they reflect anything well actually I give the credit to Brian because mm -hmm. he he did the work, you know, uh, researching the yeah, songs. Betting, betting and, the tunes, yeah. You know, everything. A lot of them I've, I've never heard before. Yeah. But they, but they resonated with you. They do. Yeah. Um, and when is it going to be coming I'm out? I'm a traditional gospel singer. Uh -huh. This type of gospel singing is new to me. Right. You know, but I had to so look modern, at it. So modern style, Christian. Yeah, the modern it. style. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's new to me, but... <laughs> like they played I'm it so well. <laughs> they played it so well till I, you know, I, I think I fell mm -hmm. into it. But I'm not sure how my audience is going to look at it. Well, anything that you are on, I'm sure they're going to look at it and love it. I they're hope so. They're going to listen to it and love it. Well, we're going to have it. It's going to have. We're having the release party December 8th, which is a couple of days after my birthday. Yeah. And they're going to have a birthday party for me. That's already on my calendar. The, the, the Tony Lynn birthday season begins now. <laughs> it's, it's, just not, yes. it's not just have one. Have you been to one of her birthday just, parties? Oh, man, the parties go on forever, man. Yeah. There's so many yeah. birthday parties for I go the Tony Lynn. I go there for the pizza and the food, not for you. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, Regina Royal Records, which is Diane Blue's. That's Diane yes. Blue's Diane label, Blue's yeah. Label. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, Ricky, I you've got some. I was first artist. Yeah, yeah you are. Mm -hmm. and you guys have played on CDs together. You know, you're a feature on a lot of the Knickerbocker CDs, which I have. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a member of the Knickerbocker All Stars. You are the Knickerbocker yes. All Stars, so there's some I'm great oh and some God. great CDs. The and, very uh, first one was. A, was I a, get hired sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sound like you on the yeah, show. yeah, yeah. My yeah. buddy Jack Gauthier remember. puts those together, doesn't he? Jack um, does that. Uh, does he do one of them? I did the first one. You did the first one, yes, okay. Because yeah. so I have the two of them, the two, the two ones that they have. There's, there's, there's a first one. Yeah. 
Cool. What's the difference? But you have music out there. You've got some CDs out I have, there. I have four CDs in the world, yeah, but I've you can't get them, them anywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go into Ricky's bed, you might find a box underneath there. No, they're, find they're a couple. all gone. I, I gave that up a while ago. You know what it's like to, to buy a thousand CDs? Okay, back in the day, it was you like, haven't you been to buy a thousand, man. You know, yeah. uh, right? Speaking no, of that, man. speaking of that, you just ditched your collection. And I, I did. I did. You ditch ditched them. your collection. I digitized and and my uh, collection. let's give Chris Anzalone a plug. Yeah. Oh my God. Stereo he's great. Jack. Chris Anzalone, you sold yeah, everything to him, Chris right? Down, got it. Yeah, man. Uh, you know something? I digitized everything. I got all, everything I had, which was pretty considerable, right. uh, on a uh, hard drive. So it's all in the digital realm now. So I really didn't need the hard copies of things. And, and you know, you get to a few hundred, 500 or so discs. It takes up a lot of space. Yeah. You know? They too. And I'll tell you, I was going through them as I was getting ready to sell them. I'm going through them. Wow, I haven't listened to that in a while. Put that on. You know, wow, you know, I have that. You know, mm -hmm. so Chris came and made me a great deal. It was time to go, you know what I mean? Some things, and, and between digitizing what you have and things like YouTube, you can ask for anything. You got everything. Anything. I mean, right. there was this, um, why would a dream make you think? That I could care for you. Well, this song was, this song was on a record called Boppin', which is a, which is a compilation, mm -hmm. and the the cover of Boppin', the album, and I, I was so cool. Where did I find it? On YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it was like, mm -hmm. it was like uh, juvenile delinquents yeah. with those old bike caps that used to look like a, a officer's hat. You I know, thought I destroyed that, that picture. Those of Those things, right? And he's got one guy's, it's one guy's in the background with a pool cue, wow. looking like he's going to hit somebody with a pool. So it's called. <laughs> That's bopping. Right? A lot of the covers are worth but that, more than but the records song, and CDs. But, so I heard that song from my brother-in-law coming up, right? And, and it hit, hit me, and I was thinking, mm -hmm. man, I need to go find that song, Deke Wilson and the Brown Dots. Mm -hmm. If you don't stop drinking whiskey, you and me gonna be through. You know, kind of Charles Brownie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but but not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and and I said one day, oh, where the hell am I gonna find that? Where did I find it? YouTube. YouTube. There it was. Well, I looked I, up the record. It's a two hundred dollar album. Oh, uh, if oh you I buy bet. It. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Now you know we're gonna have to start winding this up and. Um, I'm going to throw one little quick one at you. I've asked many people before, and we'll keep it relatively short. I give you the hammer and the chisel, and you put four people on your Mount Rushmore. Who are you putting up there, living or dead? I'm going to put Yvonne Russell at the top. Oh, how sweet no, is that? That's not an O. That's not how an O. How sweet is that? I, uh, an O as in, yes, that's beautiful. Well, in, in the sense that this woman has given me more and helped me more anybody in my life so that would be that would be first so then we can get to others right then we can get to other other things okay so I'm gonna put BB up there okay not a surprise <laughs> I'm gonna put muddy up there yep not a surprise uh, and, and then I'm gonna put the late great Hollywood fats up there because I just love Hollywood fats as, awesome. a, as a guitar player but you know if I had more room T-Bone Walker you know we could honorable go on. mention what about you miss Tony give me give me four people rattle it off and then we got to wrap it up Okay, I got Nancy Wilson. Nancy Wilson. Uh, Lou Rawls. Lou Rawls. Uh, Best album of Lou Rawls, Live at the Rooster Tail, if you oh, want to hear a seat. I oh, really? You at do? the Rooster Tail. I've got that one buried away. Oh. Great version of Shadow yeah. of Your Smile. Common and, McCray. And a great version of St. James Infirmary. And it yeah. goes right into um, yeah. uh, Tobacco Road. And of course, he I can't forget Ray right Charles. right into the two of them. <laughs> no, Ray, Ray, Charles. Charles. Ray Charles. That's three. Yep. One more. I don't, one hear, more. I don't hear Ricky King or Frank Walsh mentioned at all. Oh, sorry, Franco. Uh, you Present yeah, company Frank. excluded, Excluded, of course. Yeah, you said four. <laughs> yeah, you one said more. Four. One more? Yeah. Uh -huh. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Amen. Best vocal. Yeah. My number He's, one of all time. Yeah. Frankie Sinatra. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever yeah. notice? I've you ever, been all in there. You, you, ever know? Notice, you, know, you ever notice in a world of singers that have a lot of vibrato in their presentation? My vibrato is disappearing. Mm -hmm. But My Sinatra. Range is not as high as it used to be. Well, you know. But um, you can't somehow I'll make it The thing with Sinatra, his delivery was always flat. The summer wind. That's right. Came blowing. That's right. From across, across the, the sea. And, and I learned that that you was know, okay. Flat. 
No, it's cool. Yeah. It's actually, good it, actually yeah. it takes more control to yeah. just stay on the note rather than go ah, 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 ah yes. all over the place. Yeah. The thing yeah. about Sinatra, though, when you go to get Sinatra, if you listen to his songs, pick pick any of them out, you try to sing along with him, you can't do it because mm -hmm. his phrasing mm -hmm. is right. so... He'll hold that extra beat. He'll miss a beat. So I'll, you I'll, I'll tell you well, another thing. Well, he's a New Yorker. Huh? He's a New Yorker. Is he? He just, he's, his phrasing is unbelievable. unbelievable. You want to know why he can hold his voice so long? Go you know, for it. I, I love, he learned how to circle breathe. Circle breathe from uh, Jimmy Dorsey, the trombone yeah, Kenny, player. Kenny G was you know a how, master You know how that. trombone plays, you know, you gotta keep the, the air going right. so you're making it, so it's circle breathing. Circular breathing, right. While you're, oh. you're taking in, while you're putting out. Yeah. That's why Kenny, yeah. I think it was Kenny G. So he G. learned that from Dorsey, so once he learned how to do that, he could really yeah. handle a big I, note. I think Kenny, me, Kenny G, I ideas. saw Kenny G. There you go, <laughs> see? See what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Kenny G, I saw Kenny G and George Benson. And they were both kind of playing off in each other. And mm -hmm. Kenny was talking about holding his notes. I guess I think he might hold a record for holding the longest note. And he was talking about that. Mm -hmm. I know that rhythm. Sade does that. Yep. She does the, Sade. She's got a beautiful Just voice. Just easy, not only that, but easy approach. She don't belt. No Ethel Merman in her. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, well folks, we could, we, we could keep talking I'm forever. Yeah. But uh, first of all, I want to thank you both for coming on. Thank Tony, you. it is always a pleasure. And Ricky, thank you. let's make it not, not nine, nine years, years before again. the next one. Absolutely, so, thank you. you know, and, and we wouldn't be able to do this show without the people in the booth, Luke and Chris, pushing the buttons and making us look and sound pretty. <laughs> and we have a studio audience here today in full support. We have George Carr, Bev Dancy, and Robert Taccio, who are always supportive of this show. Hey, and Bobby. We, and we <laughs> thank them very much. And Anya steers the ship. So for Ricky King Russell, Tony Lynn Washington, thank I you. am Frank Walsh. Tune in and tune on.